Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Hay Farm series. I am your host, the Rental Man Buck. With calving season fully underway, we have to take a couple extra steps for preparation by investing in some bigger than these calf huts. We'll make the road trip over to our local tractor supply, get these girls' toes cleaned up nice and even, then finish off the rest of our day feeding cattle. We got a lot of work to do, so let's roll the intro and we'll get right to the action. Welcome back to the Hay Farm series, everybody. It has been a hot minute, but I'm really glad to be back. I'm gonna cut to the chase right away. We are going to load up and head to Tractor Supply and pick up our calf barn supplies, but whether that's being the fencing, the plastic tubs for feed, the huts themselves. We're getting ones that are bigger that can hold five calves rather than just the single little hut. But I kind of need to stay on task since Daryl is currently, you might be able to see his truck over there. He's already on working on the milking process and we're gonna move a few of our girls over and look at their feet because we still haven't moved our crush yet. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna be able to get that done this weekend. It's just, it's finally now starting to really be warm out. We've had a, a big warm spell and the forecast has it saying that it's supposed to stay around. I do not mind that, but all that means for us is we need to start getting the work done and ready for spring so we are ahead of the curve. You don't want to get behind, especially on animals. Now that the iron bolt is hooked up to the GMC, let's make our way to tractor supply and I will see you all in just a few seconds. If you guys like content like this and would like to see more, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. We are on the race to 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year. As we reach closer to tractor supply, I do want to note that I'm going to be working on a new stream schedule as well as the videos staying as consistent as I can. What that is supposed to entail is that I'm going to try and work on streaming throughout the week, like weeknights on TikTok, and then the weekend we just stream on YouTube, but then the videos are still the Tuesday, Thursday that I'm trying to work towards for consistency. That way you guys can have a lot more content with a lot less hassle. I'm going to run inside though, get all of our stuff picked up, load it on the trailer, and then we will be on our way back, and we can help Daryl with the cattle operation get up and running. Out of respect of the gentleman who was loading us, I did not really show any of the loading process, but we got everything now on the trailer. We'll make our way back to the farmstead. I did give Daryl a call to see what he is on, if he's ready to move any of the cows over, or if he's still working on milking, and he says he's finishing up milking. He has about four cows left and then we should be ready to start moving them over. What that means for me then is I'm gonna run this trailer up to the cattle barn, drop it at the new cattle barn that we just built, then I'll run over, grab the stock trailer, and we'll get the cows loaded. It seems like the best course of action to try and stay on task. I will also be sending Daryl at some point today to sell off some milk since we, we don't really have a whole lot of uh, a fun sitting around at the moment. But I, I hope this thing has enough of a turn radius. <laughs> Gonna need to figure out a parking system for how these gates work. Beautiful. If I had to say anything, I would say the construction of this cattle barn has been one of the best investments we have made so far for the hay farm. We've seen a lot better productivity out of the cows. And because I can't seem to park a trailer right, now we can get our cows in. Let's take over our heifers that are the black and white. We got 10 of each. Correction, we have 30. We have 20 black and whites and 10 of the brown. Moving them over, I will get out my trimming tools. We'll drop them off in the chute and then we'll just kind of work our way through one by one. I would just unload them over at the crush, but of course this is farm sim, you have to unload them at the chute. But I'll get these girls over to the crush and we will start trimming some hooves. Okay, enough play time. Let's move over to the crush and let's get your feet trimmed. If anything, just have fun with the scrub brush. Make yourself useful. Don't be mooing at me. You'll be fine. Yep. So, oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. Get, calm down. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Let's check your back right claw. Uh, toes are a little long. Looks like a regular routine trim. I'll start working on that. And then we'll just kind of uh, carve out with the knife quick. The disc that I'm using on the grinder is not actually like an angle grinder disc. It's got like these knives on it. It's literally a hoof knife, but it just helps with getting the big part of the material off the cow's foot, which pretty much a cow's foot with the with the claws. It's basically a giant toenail. 
So all I'm doing is just even out the weight distribution because these cows, I mean, this ground's a lot more even and it's a lot more muddy. But like the ground over there, the ground is about, it's a bit softer, it's grass, but it's a little bit more uneven. So that leaves me to just watch and monitor how these girls' hooves uh, change over time with the different layout of terrain. This hoof looks good too, so we'll just trim this up quick and then we'll kind of get through the rest of the cows. Good job today, girl. You had a, your all four claws look good. Let's get you out and on to the next one. All right, who's next? Bessie, how many times have I told you not to play in the water tank? Nobody wants to taste your stinky feet. I tell you, the nerves of some cows. All right, next. But I'm going to get the cattle loaded back up. We'll take them back over, grab our next round, and then I might have Daryl start doing some trimming, and I'll take in the milk to sell. Then we'll be able to work on that construction of the calf huts. As dirty as Daryl's truck usually is on the outside, it's always usually clean on the inside. I'll give him that. The man at least takes care of his stuff. He's already put quite a few miles on this truck, though. This it, it's, it's been used and abused for being a brand new Chevy. We'll scooch the water trailer out of the way so I can get back to the milk trailer in the back. I always forget that the milk trigger's on the right side of that barn. It's, it's really weird. But with this trailer loaded up, I'm going to check the price of milk quick. Since that might be in my best interest to find out if I'm actually going to get any money out of this. Let's see. Milk, milk, milk. Where is the milk? There it is. $2.90 a gallon that they're buying it at. I wish I could buy it in the store for that, but we obviously know that's never going to happen again. Don't you just love inflation? It's fantastic. I was asked the other day, what's your favorite console mod that's come out? And I'm not going to lie, all right? I'm a Ford guy by heart. But this 3500 Chevy really has worked its way into my into my liking book. It's just a very well put together mod. Agritono did a fantastic job on this thing. And pretty much besides maybe just how the wheels are shaped. I'm a very big person on wheels can make or break a mod. This one it doesn't really do that too. If I were to make my own edits, I might change up the tires and the wheel setups. But that's really about it. I think I missed my corner though. So I'm going to turn around, get this milk tank sold. And we'll kind of see where we're at. I might sell about four or five trailers worth. To cover all the costs, though, that I have for the cab pens, it is going to cost me roughly three grand for the supplies. That is with all of my discounts. But I'll sell at least three or four more trailer loads just so we can have a little bit of extra money. Then if all else fails, we'll end up selling a couple bales on the bale trailer, and then that should supply us at least until we can start cutting grass again. The hay farm is kind of one of my hardest farms to actually grind money out on since I don't cheat in money. You know, when I think about it now, we actually kind of have to wash out the feeder wagon. I usually give that thing a cleaning cycle every about week or so just so I clean out all the bacteria that's in it. Mainly due to the silage bales. Like the hay bales, not too worried about. The straw bales, definitely not really worried about. But those silage bales, that's basically fermented grass. So you let that stuff sit for a while. It's like it's going to build up a little bit of a uh, yee. I wouldn't want to be eating just straight mold. But if you guys want to check out the world's greatest farm soap for that reason, that's what we're going to be doing. I got a couple orders of Andy Clean coming in. You guys can check out Andy with all of his great soap products. If you want to look at him more, you can find his link down in the description down below. Fantastic guy. Farming does not have to be dirty. I think I'm actually wearing his sweatshirt today. Yes, indeed I am. It's just one more thing we got to add to the fire, but at least with that stuff, it makes the job a heck of a lot easier to get all that scum off the side of the walls. I would presume a good handful of you all that watch these videos have at least towed something in your lifetime. But if you have never pulled something that actually contains a liquid, it is always a good idea to stay even more cautious about how you're driving. Anchor trailers usually have like the bigger semi ones you see going down the interstate or the highway. They have like dividers in the middle of the tank that help that splash for the uh, liquid going back and forth. But for a tank like this, that's actually quite a bit of weight behind this truck. And if you're not careful, you can roll it, you can break it, you could not necessarily stop because you're thinking, oh, it's not that bad of a trailer. Well, in reality, that's still quite a bit of weight behind you. Moral of the story is when you're towing something that involves liquid and you know that tank does not have something that helps disperse the waves of fluid inside of it, just be mindful of that. It's a safety thing, all right? Okay, we got all of our supplies already ready to go. Daryl got the last of the cattle back in the shed. The construction for these cab pins is going to be simple. 
the gate actually goes right up to this corner of the post and then it sticks out i think to our second post back there maybe a little bit further and then this will be our calf hut section i'm going to grab the water tub set that bad boy down right there and then i'm going to pop up in the sky quick and we're going to take a look at this thing we'll start constructing we'll be building two of these as they're worth 1500 bucks a pop so i was correct on that it is worth three thousand dollars but it's a little bit smaller in square footage than i thought and then to save time i'm just going to put our other one far enough away where we could still work on it beautiful look at this little pin going inside the calf shed though it's actually pretty roomy in here as i stated this is going to be a five calf pin we could put five of them in and bessie's just kind of like snooping around over there but we have our little feeding trough as well as our milk buckets but uh, one of my favorite features that we also opted for is that we can slide this entire pin back and we can clean the floor so that way the little guy is not getting his feet infected because that's one less thing that we have to do in the crush when we go to clean them. I think though what we're going to do is we're going to check the sand beds for the cows quick, get ourselves topped off on all the food and water supply, and then it is off to bed for the night. Let's start it all over tomorrow morning and we'll see you then. Good afternoon, everybody. Now, welcome back. I was going to try and clean off the feeder wagon that did this morning, but I still haven't gotten the cows fed yet, and I think we'll just mix one last batch before we do that. I also kind of forgot that the gooseneck trailer is still up at the shop. We're going to run back quick and grab ourselves at least a few bales to make some more feed mix. Daryl's already been on time working. That man is like the best. That that dude right there is the best. Daryl is the best worker. You cannot change my mind. Neck. And yep, it is definitely feeding time. Let's run back to the shed, grab some bales, and we'll be on to feeding. I don't know why though. I need to check. Daryl might have might have a couple of them inside, but we're mi it looks like we might be missing some cows. Hold on. Let's check in the barn first. Let's not freak out. Uh, that's not good. Where did all of our cows go? Hang on. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Where did... Daryl. Daryl. Hey, did you take any more cows over to the... The trimming... The trimming chute? Well... Apparently, I'm doing a head count, and I only count 22 cows. We have 30 cows. Where's the other eight? Oh, no. Now I gotta go check the fence line. I'm correct, though. This part of the... The top part of the fence is the electric fence that we installed. But I don't... We don't have it on. Oh. What the heck did that? Did I ever shut the... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's... Uh, hey, Daryl. Yeah, do you remember that gate that we have that I never closed to the back pasture of my house? Like, I just, I always just left it open? Yeah, on the far side of our animal closure, something must not have been tied right for that barbed wire, and... Uh, yeah. Cows just left. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna go cow hunting. Gotta call up some places and let them know there's eight cows on the loose. We got... Uh, can you like fix the fence at all because that part I can't really do right now All right, I, I just closed the gate. So at least they're locked in for now All right, see you in a bit. Yeah, we are now eight cows down. I have no idea where they went But I need to get a vehicle that is a heck of a lot faster than a bobcat if I'm gonna go hunt down some cows I'm gonna make some phone calls though quick and see if anybody's gonna be on the lookout for some cattle I'm gonna leave the Ford though on the bale trailer since when I'm hauling bales, as much as I trust this Chevy to pull that, this is only a 10, that's a 450. So the suspension wise, we'll haul the cattle trailer with this. Oh, this is just how I wanted to start my morning. Nothing better than losing your, half your cattle, or at least a third of them. I mean, I guess the good place would be to look around and see if any of them are close. Okay, well there's one. Hold on. Girl, what are you doing out? You're not supposed to be out here. Daryl, we got one. She's down in the ditch. I don't know where the other ones went, though. I'll keep on my phone. Girl, what are you doing? Why are you outside? We need to get you back. Let's just see if we can work you up the hill. Yep, go on. Get. We'll get you up the hill. I got one of them coming for you, Daryl. I'm going to lead her up to the shed. She'll be up there in a little bit. Oh, now she's running. 
Okay, we gotta chase this to go down. I think this truck yeah oh this one does not have the bull bar on the front. Dang it. Say I could just push her back, but that probably wouldn't be the greatest idea. I'll get this one rung around and then we'll see if we can maybe get some phone calls about any of the other ones. Good news is we at least got one cow back in. Now we gotta go find the seven more. Oh yeah, you shake your head. You know what you did wrong. Let's grab the cattle trailer and play a game of I Spy the Cow. Daryl, you let me know if anything else happens. I'll be back as soon as I can. If not, call Jeff or Corey and see if they can't come out and help. I know Kevin's gone on vacation right now. He's down in Florida. Hello? There's a cow in the middle of the playground. How did it? Yep, that'd be mine. I called in. We had cows out. I'll be down in a minute. I'm on my way. Thank you. The good news is we have another one on target, but the bad news is why and how on earth did they get a cow all the way down to the park? That confuses me. How did that, how did the cow get all the way down to the park? That literally makes no sense. Said it was somewhere in the little, oh, come on. Can you not please? Oh, for crying out loud. Park hours, eight to 12 a.m. I don't think that means you park your rear right next to the flagpole, Bessie. You know better. No, don't you shake your head at me. You know you did wrong. Come on, let's get you in the trailer. Damn you. Yeah. Damn you. Get yourself in the trailer, girl. Get yourself in the trailer. I will get this girl dropped off in the shed, and then we're just going to kind of drive around and see if we just see any random cows. That's the furthest one of them went. So if that's how far one went, I don't want to know where the other ones went. If I look at my map though, we found the one down in this quadrant, but the one other one was standing like right in this ditch. So I wonder if they're somewhere up in this tree area. I might see if I head over to the campground or possibly up by my, my other fields where I let them graze if they just kind of migrated up where, over in this area, cause that's a lot of grass. I don't know, I'll try and maybe make my way over to the campground see if I can find anything there. A few moments later. Hello. Yeah, this is Buck. Do you, you find my cows? you find my random cows? There's one of them that's drinking out of the water fountain. How? Okay, fine. I won't ask you then. Where are you at? You're up at the camp. I was making my way up there. I'm like, okay, so I found one in the ditch. And then there was another one that was all the way down in the public park downtown. I have no idea how I got there. How many are there? How many are at the campgrounds? Because I'm missing seven more right now. No, six more. All six of them are up there? Okay, I'm on my way. Well, at least I know where the rest of the cows are. They are up by the campgrounds. They're somewhere up in the tree lines, but one of them is currently just waddling around on the campsites. Definitely better hope you don't have an AC unit, otherwise these trees will take it out. Look at... Really? It's like, I'm going to look for a cow. It's just standing right in the middle. Oh, she knows she messed up. She's she's staring right at me. She's like, uh-oh. I don't think I'm getting fed today. No, you'll get fed. To the wolves. Let's see, is there anything else? Anyone else? Keep an eye peeled for cows. You just, you ever just go cow hunting when you go camping? Just, you just casually go look for cows? Yep, there they all are. Come on. Really, guys? Really? Don't even look at me that way. You know what you did. This is gonna be an absolute poo show trying to get these guys loaded up because I gotta chase them all around and I don't really have anything to herd them with. So I'll catch you guys back in a little bit once we kind of have this situation figured out and the cattle are loaded back up. That took way longer than it ever needed to. Probably would have helped if I had more hands on deck. But all the cows now have been at least, I think, accounted for. That should be that. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Everyone stop moving. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Later. I can't tell. Yeah, 30. That's that's 30 cows. I'm ready to go home. And everybody else is too. But at least we get to the fun part now. This part's easy. Let's just get our bib. I don't have any mineral feed. I'm going to have to get some mineral feed on order and pick it up from track supply. But at least for now, I'm going to get the feed wagon mixed up. We'll dump that off. And we'll pretty much end out the rest of our day. Oh, the hungry, hungry cow just ran up to the chute. Out can Oh, jeez, he's coming. He's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's feeding time. They know. Look at him. He's running. 
With that now emptied out, I'm gonna go check up on that fence line, see whether or not we got our wire fixed and whether or not how well it was done. But Daryl also took his payment from me, so that's a first. Okay, let's check you out. Oh, he just drilled it into the back, because I think it might have... Oh, I bet you that's what happened. I bet you this wasn't in there tight enough, and then it just... Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, that fence line's now fixed, so they should be within containment. If we want to let them out, they can run free in this pasture. This is an enclosed area, but that at least takes care of that problem. We'll have to make sure we keep an eye on them. Sneaky little cows. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for checking out the Hay Farm series. I hope you guys all are having a fantastic start to your week. That is going to do it, though, for me. We will see you guys all in the next one. Be sure to check out the Boomstick Club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang. You already know who is in it. We'll see you all in the next one. This is the Rental Man out. Peace.